You're listening to Divine Conversations, Episode 2. Welcome to Divine Conversations. I'm your host, Layla, and this podcast is intended to inspire, empower, and provide practical tools to heal, raise your awareness, and elevate your consciousness so that you can embody your higher self and live your ideal life. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Divine Conversations. I'm so excited to share today's episode with you because it was recorded a while back and now it's January 2020 and I'm finally getting ready to birth this podcast out into the world and I have been just waiting so patiently or impatiently rather um, to share this conversation with you because it's one of the topics that is uh, I, that I'm most passionate about and is the nearest and dearest to my heart and close to my mission because I truly believe that bef- in our mission to change the world, for those of us who have this calling to make the world a better place, to bring more positivity and change in the world, that the most sustainable way that we can accomplish that is by first healing ourselves, the wounded parts of ourselves, and then in doing so, not passing on the trauma that we've experienced, and not only we've experienced, but also is generational and was passed down to us, uh, not to pass that along to our children. And the only way to actually do that is to first heal ourselves. And as my lovely guest likes to refer, Dr. Vanessa Lapointe, which I will share a bit about very soon, um, likes to refer that you first need to grow yourself up in order to then be able to grow your children up. Because within each one of us, there is an aspect of an inner child that uh, unless healed, we are carrying with us throughout life. And so this is a very, very um, powerful conversation, a very important conversation. And I highly recommend listening to it. And also if this resonates with you, if you're a parent or if you are thinking of becoming a parent one day, I couldn't recommend Dr. Vanessa Lapointe and her work and her two books to you um, because it's science-based and it's practical and it's truly life-changing for you and for your children now or your future children. So I'll share a little bit about Dr. Vanessa Lapointe. So she is a mom and a registered psychologist, a parenting educator, best-selling author, international speaker, and a regularly invited media guest. She's a founder and director of the Wishing Star LaPointe Developmental Clinic, and she's been supporting families and children for almost 20 years and has previous experience in community mental health and the school system. And I can definitely attest to the next point. She is also a connoisseur of all things to do with stunning footwear, and not only, she has a fabulous fashion sense and an all-around, just a radiant being that just is pure light. Being in her presence is just ex- just extraordinary because she embodies everything she teaches and she is just a bright light for sure in the world. And I am I was very privileged to uh, meet her and I'll share how that came about in a second. I just want to finish her bio so that you get to know her a little bit. So while navigating the journey of parenting her own two children, including the Uh, reconstruction of her family through divorce. She has two wonderful boys. Uh, Dr. Vanessa has been challenged to grow herself up. And uh, rather than hiding behind the glossy facade, she acknowledges how much she's in the muck of it, just like everyone else, which I so appreciate and love because it makes her that much more real, authentic and relatable to all of us. From this awakened place, she journeys along on a path that lands for herself and her family, all of which has profoundly changed her life and is a significant influence on her speaking and her practice. So the way that, um, you know, idea came to me to have her on the podcast was I came, um, I was 
part of a online summit called beyond the parenthood summit and she was one of the guests and as soon as i saw her i knew that i wanted to have her on the podcast one day and at that point that was just an idea so i made a little note in my notebook of all the wonderful people that i want to invite to be on the podcast and uh and i knew that uh, one day i would love to have this conversation with her and to bring her work out to the world and to my community and so I started following her on Instagram and just commenting on, uh, you know, her posts, which are amazing. I highly recommend. She's at Dr. Vanessa Lapointe on Instagram uh, if you want to follow her along there. And, uh, you know, we kind of just started chatting on Instagram and I let her know that I was going to be starting a podcast and I would love to have her on as a guest. And she you know, said, absolutely, I would love to. And we were going to uh, record this virtually. And then she was uh, in the midst of launching her second book, which we discuss both books in the episode to come. So stay tuned for that. And she said she was going to be in Toronto. She lives in Vancouver, Canada, and I'm in Toronto. So she was coming here for uh, on a book tour and said if we wanted to get together to do the re recording in person. And I jumped at the opportunity because as much as, you know, it's special to connect with people online and uh, it's, it's amazing to be able to share, uh, you know, what everyone is up to and the wonderful work they're doing. There's something um, really, really wonderful about meeting in person and being in someone's presence. So it was just such an amazing experience. And I just, from the second I saw her on the Beyond Parenthood Summit, I knew that, uh, you know, our souls have some, have some kind of a deep connection. And uh, yeah, so I'm just beyond excited to share with you this episode finally. And uh, yeah, as we dive into the today's episode, I just welcome you to open your mind Bring the awareness down from your head into your heart and listen with the ears of your soul. So let's go. All right, everyone. Welcome to Divine Conversations, episode two. Today, I am beyond excited to introduce you to one of my favorite humans, mm -hmm. Dr. Vanessa Lapointe. Um, you've heard the bio previously. So we are here in person meeting for the first time. But I feel like um, we kind of know each other through Instagram and in my heart, it feels like mm. I've known you for lifetimes or I've known you before. We have danced before. It feels like mm -hmm. it, definitely. So it's a privilege and an honor to meet you in person and to have this opportunity to have this sacred conversation. Mm. I adore you and the work you're doing in the world. I think it's so important. I truly believe that this work is what's going to sustainably change the world because mm -hmm. it starts at home yeah. it starts with children um and what is needed in the world is children that are whole adults that are whole because mm -hmm. if you are not uh having to you know heal and clear stuff then you can be right away aligned with why you're here on planet earth <laughs> and sharing your gifts without having to do the heavy lifting so i'm just beyond excited to bring uh you to my audience and your work and uh welcome thank you <laughs> i'm just as excited <laughs> so um i want to start with just talking about uh what is 2.0 parenting mm -hmm. because i think it's such a new concept to a lot of people so if you could just go into that and explain what that means yeah so together with my partner david loist we've come up with this concept of parenting 2.0 and the idea is that um for years now probably very forcefully so from about the 1940s on forward but really and truly if we were to historically look at back at child raising or parenting uh, the predominant um, approach has always been something that i would refer to as behaviorist mm -hmm. in nature and the idea behind behaviorism uh, is that you can manipulate a child into behaving the way that you want them to behave and there really isn't a lot of space for the child as a a soulful being to exist in that at all mm -hmm. and so what we discovered is that if we played a child's greatest needs against them mm -hmm. we could pretty much get kids to do anything that we wanted 
Heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. And so generations of humans have been sort of parented that way. And it's James Hollis who said that almost without exception, we all will have suffered our greatest wounds at the hands of our parents. And so that is true for all of us to a greater or lesser extent, Mm -hmm. even for Dr. Vanessa's own children, that will be true. It's Mm -hmm. just how life goes. Uh, But one of the things that we know for sure is that you will parent as you were parented because the inner child within you is still there Mm -hmm. you are all the ages that you have ever been Mm -hmm. so I'm 44 but I have a two-year-old in me and a four-year-old in me and a 14-year-old in me and a 24-year-old in me Um, and so when I step into the parent-child relationship for the second time in my life because remember I've been in a parent-child relationship once before Mm -hmm. when I was the child Mm -hmm. and now I step into it in my adult form as the parent Mm -hmm. but when the going gets tough I will become age regressed and so I turn into my child form Mm -hmm. and I'm attempting to grow up another child Mm -hmm. from that place and so behaviorism really speaks to the fact that we're manipulating behavior and oftentimes parenting Mm -hmm. um, from a space where we become regressed children who Mm -hmm. are at the effect of the behaviorist parenting we received Mm -hmm. so fast forward to parenting 2.0 and we we have shone the spotlight on what we believe to be the three the three foundational um sort of core uh ideas core ways of being Mm -hmm. that uh, if we could infuse our child raising with those kinds of ideas we really would in one generation Mm -hmm. be able to change the world I believe that wholeheartedly yeah truly and you see that already with you know just the way mindful and conscious parents are raising their kids you can see that these beings are so free to just be who they are to just not be forced into a mold and Right. It's, it's it's so inspiring. It's, it's and when you've been around, if you're around um, a parent or parents who are connecting with mm-hmm. this little being that's been brought to them to um, guide through a developmental journey, when you see them connecting in a soulful, conscious mm-hmm. kind of way, you cannot help but be uh, impacted mm-hmm. by the energetic field around that and so the more parents we have that understand parenting 2.0 and the three pieces which I'll tell you about in a moment we collectively begin to raise the vibrational field and um, and if you can imagine sort of a wave of that vibration sort of over the globe it would be we really I really believe to the core of my being uh, we would change the world. It does create a sustainable Absolutely. future for all of us. Exactly yeah. what I believe is as, uh, in as well. And that's why I'm so passionate about right. just being an advocate for just, again, bringing this to as many people as are ready to hear it mm-hmm. and do the work. Because right. this, this type of uh, journey requires major commitment and uh, courage mm-hmm. and I, I think I'll let you talk about the three points and then if yeah. we can go into the concept of because you talk a lot about in order to grow our kids we grow have ourselves. to first grow ourselves True. and so if you could then go into what does that actually mean what does yeah. it mean to grow ourselves okay perfect so these three pieces of parenting 2.0 number one is to be very attachment focused in the way that you are parenting to understand that above food and water and shelter and clothing the very most important need that our children have is relationship Mm -hmm. connection Mm -hmm. attachment Mm -hmm. and that everything about how we parent whether it's discipline whether it's how we tuck them into bed at night how we wake them up in the morning how we uh, feed their bodies everything about it needs to be infused with Mm -hmm. connectedness love that so So attachment is number one number two is to honor development Mm -hmm. as a real thing Mm -hmm. you know two-year-olds have tantrums because they have 
gorgeously immature little brains Mm -hmm. by design that are still working to connect up and to wire up. And so they're not going to be able to hold on to their big feelings all the time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that'll get away from them. And they'll have what one of my gorgeous little clients called a brain kaboom. (laughs) And they have a tantrum. And so what a perfect thing. What a perfect thing for a two-year-old to be doing uh, to show us that they're growing in exactly Mm -hmm. the manner that nature intended. Three-year-olds struggle to share. Mm -hmm. because three-year-olds don't have the wiring to be able to hold on to two big ideas at the same time, Mm -hmm. which is actually essential to sharing. Mm -hmm. I want that toy. You'll be sad if I take the toy away from you. They just can't hold on to it. And so the whole idea with developmentally centered parenting is that we honor the child for who they are, and we do not make them wrong Mm -hmm. for being the very human that they are Mm -hmm. the brain is not there right right. that's that's like scientifically proven right yeah i have uh green eyes what if i were made wrong for having green eyes right and what if i made wrong for that in my most formative stages so that i experience the wash of shame for the rest of your life exactly so attachment focus developmentally centered Mm -hmm. and then the third and perhaps even most important piece is to be conscious Mm -hmm. in the way that you parent Mm -hmm. to understand that the um our cognitive minds are not what's running the show that we all have uh this uh ocean of subconscious programming that exists under the surface, some of it that's brought forward with us from our own childhoods, Mm -hmm. some of it that comes through the family line, uh, and some of it that just comes through the universe to who we are now. But those programs are what run the show. Love that so much Mm -hmm. and totally couldn't agree more. All right, so then all this sounds amazing in theory and a lot of us could really intellectually understand that, but what does that actually mean in real world, in the real world, in mm-hmm. the practical terms, what does it mean to grow ourselves mm-hmm. um, in order to then be able to grow our children with those philosophies and th- that foundation? I love that question because I think so many of us try to approach personal growth from an intellectualized place. At least I know that I did. <laughs> and so to grow ourselves, we have to accept a couple of core truths. And one of those is that nothing out there is real. What we experience as our lives is what we have created as an experience of our lives. Mm -hmm. And so your kid is driving you crazy. It's not real unless you make it real. It's the story you're attached to it. It's a story that you've attached to this experience that you're having. You could just as easily attach a different story. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so we have to really come to terms with that piece. Mm-hmm. I think that's a big heady. It's an ownership. It's just like a sense of ownership, right? Yeah, exactly. That it all starts with you. Yeah, yeah. And it's very hard, especially when you're in um, a time of struggle, mm-hmm. if you will, in your mm-hmm. life, to take ownership of that. Oh, like, yeah. what do you mean? It's, it's not, not my, my fault. kid's fault. <laughs> what do you mean it's my fault? Like, I you're have to. You're going to add to my plate, right? right? I've right. had enough. I have enough to deal with. But but truly, I completely agree. On my journey, that's exactly what I'm now, I've discovered and now trying to embody that every single experience is simply just a reflection and a projection of what what you are, the vibration you're holding. So that's right. Totally agree with that. Yeah. yeah. So then, what is? How do we then? What do we do? <laughs> right. And for me, what it took was a series of wake up calls. Mm-hmm. And so I can speak to my personal journey, where it, those wake up calls were challenging times in my life uh, that got louder mm. and the louder. The pebbles and then the stones, right? And louder. <laughs> and I stayed asleep for a really long time. <laughs> And then my marriage blew up. Mm. It had been um, struggling for many years. And and it blew up in a really spectacular kind of way. Mm. Um, And I found myself uh, just sort of uh, bathed in this sea of shame Mm. and embarrassment and feeling really um, overwhelmed by the experience that I was having. Uh, and, you know, was full of finger pointing of course, at my children's course, father, you know, if he had done this and if he hadn't been so this and, you know, blame, 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 shame, shame, shame. Um, and then I had a conversation uh, that put me on a whole new trajectory. And the conversation was really about 
uh, have you ever thought that it could be this? Mm -hmm. And it was sort of a re... Uh, a perspective a, shift. Yeah, and a telling of a different story. Mm -hmm. And you know when you're ready to receive something mm -hmm. and the message lands and it literally stopped me in my tracks. Right. Like m my breath caught in my body and mm -hmm. I thought, oh, I, I have missed it. Mm -hmm. I missed it entirely. And that was the beginning of feeling myself being cracked open. Mm -hmm. And so I found uh, somebody to work with. I found that it was really important. I mean, I'm a psychologist. I do this stuff for a living and I needed my own guide. Of course. I needed somebody that would help uh, point me towards my wounds, mm -hmm. my um, healing that needed to be done. So I found that guide. I, uh, I did uh, some group work with her where I would um, go through sort of these intensive... What type of modality was it, if mm, you don't mind? It's a, a multi-modality kind of approach. Um, and so she talks a lot about inner child mm. work, um, which was very familiar to me, given mm -hmm. that I'm really immersed in the world of attachment right. theory and how that plays out in us as children and adults. Mm -hmm. um, she, she uses several sort of healing uh, modalities. Holotropic breathwork is among them. Um, Byron Katie mm -hmm. is a big part of that and using the work, as right. Byron uh, Katie calls it, uh, being able to really analyze your thoughts. Mm -hmm. And so my kids should not have tantrums. My kids should be more grateful. My spouse should not. My spouse should be mm -hmm. more this. Uh, and that you really check those thoughts every single time mm -hmm. so that you can find what is in it for you, what needs to be mined from that for you. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and so there's uh, there's all sorts of processes around all of that. Lots of um, looking at family systems mm -hmm. and constellation kind of work mm -hmm. to see how the family lines up and how that's coming through you and even through your children. Uh, that it might not even be your stuff right. that you're acting right. out, but that you're something's coming through you from sure. generations yeah. past. Yeah. And so it really is a, a blended approach of all of those different kinds of things. And it has been my experience. I often, when I'm trying to describe it to people, you know, if you're trying to lose 150 pounds and you're every single day staring at yourself in the mirror, mm. trying to look for evidence of, you know, weight loss or a pound having come off, you're going to make yourself crazy. Oh, yeah. Personal growth works a little like that, where you, you aren't necessarily going to know that things are shifting and moving and changing under the surface. But one day, a year down the road, or two years down the road, mm -hmm. you're going to turn around and you're going to say, wow, things are so different. I've grown. You've grown. Um, another thing that I have done is psyche, which is mm, um, yeah. like energetic yeah. work within the body. Mm -hmm. Using kinesiology as part of that, right? Yeah, to yeah. connect to those internal programs right, and right. that subconscious yeah. mind. I love that. Yeah, yeah. it's been all... So powerful, right? So simple, but so, so powerful. powerful. Yeah. yeah, and it's really the... My feeling is it, there's a synergistic accumulation of that work that that has led me to the healing journey that I'm on and the trickle down effects of that I got to tell you as a mom of mm. my two growing boys are pretty spectacular yeah of course because as you are shifting in my experience with my own children who are still so little but I see it I think it's probably even more evident with uh, when they're younger is that they are truly a mirror yeah. whatever state I'm in they are just literally immediately projecting that or just reflecting that to me mm -hmm. it's it's truly spectacular isn't they're it? Super, I, I feel like they're just young attuned. children they're just energy they're attuned, super right? feelers yeah. they really yeah. are they, they haven't had it socialized out of them mm -hmm. in the way that we might have i think that's our nature isn't it yeah like that's our intuitive nature is just that's to right. attune to the energy because there's they're not in their head yet they're just fully present yeah right? so that's isn't that that's, magic yeah uh -huh. truly so really they are our greatest teachers mm -hmm. if we if we commit to this work and really becoming our whole selves yeah uh, it, again it's just a paradigm shift that whole idea of parenting 2.0 is just a complete paradigm shift yes. um, again taking ownership and responsibility because everything is just created by just who you are in this moment. And that's the good thing about it, all that. And you're the one to talk about it. the brain aspect of that is that our brains are uh, moldable, right? Mm -hmm. They're changeable. And that's the beauty of the fact that you can change 
and, and that's probably a you know a, a change in a belief system oh yeah right that you no matter how much trauma and suffering and things that you've experienced you can change with that's a right. decision uh, that's been in my journey and just an intention that no more it ends with me that's right right so um, that's freedom yeah right oh, there it's just yeah it's truly liberating right yeah. it's so painful and it's so at times uh mm. just excruciating as you're going through those growing pains mm. but then once you kind of go through that initiation it's like oh my god i can be me yeah. <laughs> you know it's it's just the most amazing work which is why i'm so passionate about bringing it to as many people as i as I are ready because of the fact that you don't need to carry this baggage with mm. you. You can be free to be yeah. you and to just really be aligned with your passion and your gifts yeah. um, and, your, and your purpose, you know, uh, purpose work. Um, yeah. So yeah, I love, I love all this. I love this conversation. <laughs> I love everything you're sharing. Um, so um, did you want to add anything to that, to the growing, to uh, the how-to of how do we grow ourselves? With I think the idea is to uh, to find yourself a guide mm -hmm. and to be very open to exploring a whole bunch of different yeah, approaches absolutely. in terms of really what connecting. What works for you, right? Absolutely. It will and be different for all of us. Absolutely, yeah. because we're all different beings. Yes, yes. And so my experience has been, you know, the things that I have found really, really powerful have been unique to those of other people that I know who mm -hmm. are on their own healing journeys. Right. So just be open and explore, um, talk to people. Mm -hmm. uh, the more you, you talk about these kinds of things, the yeah. more you realize everybody's interested right. people are talking yeah, this is yeah, happening yeah. and so you'll it's find part of the awakening community. right absolutely yeah. i love it so now i would love to um talk about the work that you're sharing with the world through your books mm -hmm. um discipline without damage um i both books um the second book that i have a copy of right here i'm so excited to dive in parenting right from the start laying a healthy foundation in the baby and toddler years again this is really it like yeah. if you lay the foundation they don't have to carry the baggage they can just be free to be them so um if you can just start we're going to talk about this book absolutely i'm so excited but i would love to again go back to your first mm -hmm. book again the idea and just such a different approach from the conventional model of parenting and what discipline means if you just you know stop anybody on the street and ask them what it means they probably think it's you know control and fix and mold and this and it's absolutely not that for me uh, the idea was introduced to me through a different book and i just love this because it, it needs to happen that paradigm shift has to happen and yeah. uh yeah i would love for you to just talk mm -hmm. about what that book is all about and what you share there mm -hmm. um and everybody should get both books because <laughs> um they're I, I think they're similar but different yeah. in what they present so absolutely yeah. so discipline without damage how to get your kids to behave without messing them up mm -hmm. the love the titles <laughs> love the titles and the subtitles it's amazing that book was really all about bringing connection mm -hmm. back into the world mm -hmm. of uh raising up our children and my experience had been in as a psychologist that a lot of the kids I was seeing uh, in my practice and the parents that I was working with um, in my practice, I'm a child psychologist, but I rarely work directly with children. Mm. Uh, the challenges had arisen because of how the children were being disciplined, mm -hmm. that there was no heart, no connection, no attachment um, in that approach to discipline and of course that approach to discipline had been informed by the dominant pop culture of child mm -hmm. raising which is infused with the biases of behaviorism mm -hmm. and so we use you know our children need connection more than they need anything else and we play it against them we put them in a timeout oh. where we take the connection away in order to secure their good behavior control and control right. yeah. does it work well What's your definition? With damage. <laughs> it works with damage. Right. Yeah. So yes, I suppose it works in the sense that the behavior stops. Mm. But then the question that we must ask ourselves is at what cost? cost? Yeah. And the cost is a significant one. Oh my one. gosh. It's, 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 yeah. So discipline without damage was all about how can we come at this anew? Mm -hmm. How can we approach the raising up of our children without 
playing their needs against them without using disconnection as a primary approach mm -hmm. when we know connection mm -hmm. is uh, the be all and end all for healthy child development. Right. Um, and so really it's, it's doing away with timeouts, it's doing away with consequencing, it's doing Spanking away with, that, oh, right? oh, certainly oh with gosh. anything physical, doing away with removing privileges, doing away with reward systems mm -hmm. because even star charts and earning time towards you know the the ipad or whatever it is even these reward systems actually have at their core uh, a fundamental experience of disconnection mm -hmm. for children mm -hmm. and so the book sort of walks the reader through um, how kids go and grow how the brain develops why attachment so important and then really spells out why those traditional approaches to discipline do not work in the at long least term, right? if yeah. we're considering the right. heart and soul of the right. child and then what do you do instead mm -hmm. because a lot of parents exactly. will be like okay. that was what i was just thinking right it's like <laughs> so we just release them to the flowery meadows right. <laughs> and watch them blossom and the idea is that kids need for parents to step in mm -hmm. they need um safe containment in our guidance they need safe containment in us sort of letting them know how it's going to go mm -hmm. so that they can, they may not always love it, but that they can be held safely within that nurturing kind of an embrace. And so to step in and to be firm when that's required, mm -hmm. but to be full of heart mm -hmm. and kindness and compassion mm -hmm. as well. So that's what discipline I love it. without damage is all about. I absolutely love it. And uh, something that I personally want to just ask you to elaborate a bit more on, what do we replace the reward system with? Because none of this is how I was raised. Mm -hmm. So now with my own kids, you know, things come up and I, it's, try to educate myself constantly on all this so I have things in my toolbox but I do find that I am struggling with what do I replace the reward how do you mo motivate is not even the word um, you know what I'm trying to say yeah right? how do we re replace that reward system how do you have children moving towards the things that we need for them yeah. to move towards right. without using what's actually for their best good yeah. right the highest yeah. and best good that's so right what, how, what do we do there so from the science of child development and the um, relationship based approach that I've been speaking about we know that when children are connected mm -hmm. in deep attachment with their special big people their moms and their dads and their caregivers and the other special big people in the inner circle that are helping to to grow them up when they're really connected um, the amount of resistance that they will have to your guidance to your leadership is going to be low and it sort of works like a teeter-totter when connection is high mm -hmm. resistance is low when connection is low resistance will oh, be high that makes so much sense because we are wired as human beings to not um, accept the influence of people to whom we don't feel connected to. Makes so much sense. So if you're struggling with a child who's not coming along, rather than using kind of a quick fix strategy in the moment, like um, you know a timeout or a punitive thing or a reward system kind of strategy, really retreat mm -hmm. to the base issue. And the base issue is that the child isn't feeling connected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and so we wanna um, really nurture the connection. And that can be true of the relationship overall right but it could also be true of the relationship in that in exact that moment, moment for sure because you just barged into their bedroom and said right. I need you to come to the dinner table and now they're saying no I'm in the middle of something yeah like it's, because yeah. they're feeling disconnected sure. like can't you see they, right <laughs> not seen and that's part of this that's whole it. thing right to, yeah. to be seen and heard yeah. and so you um one of just respect uh, it's just basic right like, absolutely yeah. and you connect to direct right absolutely absolutely mm -hmm. so before we move on i really would like if you don't mind to share a couple of tips on connection of course your books and everything you share mm -hmm. gives so much more mm -hmm. but um, i really want people to take away things from this um, conversation so just a couple of short small yeah. things that we can we can do to foster that connection yeah um and why don't i go to when it gets hard mm -hmm. so in the sure. behaviorally challenging Absolutely. moments how do we stay connected when it matters than, most that's right <laughs> it's easy to connect when you're that's snuggling right, and, warm and, fuzzy. Story, right? <laughs> yeah. and so 
think about focusing in those challenging moment, moments, focus on the relationship, not the behavior. Mm-hmm. So, so often we'll see, you know, a child's just hit another child or whatever it is that's happened. And you'll see that the focus becomes the behavior. Mm-hmm. How many times have I told you not to hit? We just talked about that. You mm-hmm. remember, we use gentle hands, not hitting hands. So we go on and on and on about the behavior. Are you in my head? Are you in my house? <laughs> Those are the exact words I use. <laughs> and so instead, if we can retreat to the relationship and how you might approach it is you drop a very quick flag because we want the experience of being seen and heard and that connectedness to remain really high for the child and so you can't go in and stay in with a big lecture Mm. you go in with a quick flag drop Mm -hmm. and a flag drop is five words or less that's the rule this must stop three words Mm. you're winning Mm -hmm. gentle hands two words right so you get in and you get out Mm -hmm. before they start to feel like the connection isn't there that's Mm -hmm. the key so you flag drop you let them know they just bumped into a wall and that's not on right and then you go right to relationship boundaries right absolutely and then you go to relationship and you're having a hard time mm, acknowledging it, what it's they're, really tricky right. to be a little brother isn't it mm. I think if I were you I'd feel exactly the same way and so you had some yelly shouts or whatever it is right. so you see them and you hear them and you honor them in their experience mm-hmm. does it mean that they're never ever going to do it again have you met a The way you learn is through repetition, <laughs> right. right? Yeah. Fail course. better next time. Right. So mm-hmm. so what I'm hearing is first you ground in the boundary mm-hmm. because you're setting what's okay and what's not okay. That's right. And then you see them for yeah. the challenge they're having. Yeah. And that's connection. Yeah. And that's it, right? And it's watch so them melt. Yeah. Watch them right. melt. Right. Because that's all every that's human what, wants. Right. Just to be seen and validated. I love yeah. that. Awesome. Perfect. Is there anything else you wanted to add to the damage without discipline before we move on about the new baby? (laughs) That's right. No, I think that's sort of the thing. And to know, I mean, I guess the overarching thing is that we we always want to know how it's going to look in real life. Mm -hmm. And yet, um, one of the things that Wayne Dyer said is we are not human doings. We are human beings. One of my favorites. And so discipline without damage isn't really so much about what you're going to do as much as it is about how you are going to be Mm -hmm. alongside your child moment to moment day to day and that's that's the hard part because if you're not doing your work Mm. and you're not growing yourself then you're literally just operating on you know trigger by trigger basis and out of your habitual fear-based response so the question the the really the most important thing is to get on the journey of healing and personal growth so then you don't damage your kids that's the idea Mm -hmm. wonderful so then this new book which is so exciting um again parenting right from the start Mm -hmm. let's get into it (laughs) yeah let's do it so this book i mean really and truly i wish that i had had this book when i became a mother um it sort of is you know everybody says well they don't come with a manual my thought is Mm. this is maybe the kind of manual that might be helpful to especially new parents and whether you're a new parent who's um, welcoming a biological child into the world or a parent who's adopted or is fostering children uh, that's going to bring stuff up Mm -hmm. becoming a parent is our biggest invitation that we will ever receive to personal growth Uh, and uh, so to know that that's going to happen Mm -hmm. so parenting right from the start um, I wrote uh, partly from my own experiences but also informed by the journeys of the hundreds of families that I've worked with over the span of Mm -hmm. my career. And the first half of the book, curiously, I mean, it's a book that for young children, parents of young children, uh, but really, this is a book for anybody who's ever been a child. Mm -hmm. Because it helps you to make sense of where it is that you have come from. So that as you are working to grow yourself, mm-hmm. you really have an understanding of the foundational. What happened to you, That's right? it. Yeah. What went into the forming of your mind. And why, why you are the way you are and why you react the way you do to the things that happen, right? Right. Yeah. So the first six chapters really have nothing to do with what you're going to do with your babies and your toddlers. The first six chapters are all about, it begins with an exploration of you, the adult, in yourself, Where is it that you've come from? Mm -hmm. Uh, What kind of parenting did you receive? How might that be affecting you as a person today? What kinds of things are down your family line? How might that be affecting uh, the person that you are today? And uh, in particular, the parent that you are today. 
Um, I do talk about child development, how the brain mm -hmm. develops and mm -hmm. the kinds of conditions that lead to optimal um, brain growth and development. I talk about attachment. Mm -hmm. I talk about the epidemic that is children who are what I call Hulk children, uh, who don't feel like they can count on the grown-ups in mm. their lives and so have to count on it's themselves. Heartbreaking. And so we go through all of those things piece by piece and bit by bit to really make sense of that foundational material. And then the second half of the book is about how to, like, so, okay, cool. So what does that have to do with raising a baby and a mm -hmm. toddler? <laughs> and so I talk about, you know, if you're, if you're struggling in sleep, mm -hmm. what is the parent part of that? Mm -hmm. And what's the baby part of that? And how do we bring together science and development and attachment and personal growth right. when we're struggling with sleep with our baby right. or feeding or, you know, aggression or sibling rivalry or transferring, um, uh, bringing in a new caregiver mm. if you have to, you know, go back to work. And so now you have right. a nanny or daycare, whatever it is. How do you do all of those things? Being That's consciously incredible. informed, yeah, developmentally centered, and always, always, always with connection at the forefront. I couldn't love that more. The, even just alone, the first part, the mm -hmm. first six chapters alone can be so enlightening and can really catapult you on this awakening journey yeah. and healing journey. That's so, my hope. Right? One like, generation. It's amazing. Yes. And the world would be transformed. I totally am right there with you. It's incredible. So, um, is there anything else you wanted to add to the, the, the book and what people can gain out of it? Mm -hmm. um, it sounds like there's a lot of practical tips, right? With each of the yeah. challenges that come with parenting. That's the idea because I think it can be really difficult to take this sort of, you know, heady material mm -hmm. of consciousness and attachment and all of these things and my kid won't sleep. Mm -hmm. So like, I don't want to do talk do? about all that stuff. Right. I want to talk about my kid's not sleeping. I'm not and sleeping. I'm, I'm exhausted. Mind, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> and that's what's making me a terrible parent. Right. Um, and so people do want to know, well, how do I bring it to life? How do I breathe that into my daily right. experience? And so it was really important to take those pieces that can become kind of the tricky areas when you have young children and bring to life mm -hmm. this kind of approach, parenting right from the start. Um, so that you have a sense of how that will play out day to day. So there are sort of, you'll feel like there's very practical pieces to it. Mm -hmm. And throughout the, the constant theme woven throughout the book is that you must grow yourself in order to right. grow your children. Of course, it, com it all starts and ends with you, really. It really does. Um, so if you're open to it, I would love to hear more about your story uh, of your own childhood and how that influenced your choice of work, uh, your line of work, and, yeah. and then, of course, your own parenting journey, because I really feel like stories is how we, uh, mm. you know, it, it reaches the heart, uh, yeah. because we can find ourselves sometimes in the stories, and uh, the information can just land deeper. Mm -hmm. So if you're open to that, I would love to yeah. hear about your own childhood, and again, how that influenced you and your parenting mm -hmm. challenges yeah and so i would say what i've discovered to date and you know hopefully i still have lots of years of evolving in front of me is that as a child um i had two parents who loved me deeply uh, i had a very normal childhood by all accounts i uh, got to live the dream my parents ran a recreational um property for the church that they were a part of uh, which meant that I like lived my life as like a wild child oh, that's I was out all the time in the forest oh. and riding my horse bareback oh. through the rivers like from the time I was four or five years oh, of that's age a dream. That's so I had dream. this really <laughs> on the one hand this very sort of you know uh, lovely mm. childhood and um, grounded in yeah, nature in that's a lot so of ways good. and uh, my family struggled like every other family and so my parents eventually divorced when I was 16 mm. and certainly that didn't fall from the sky there had been you know tension in our home all the way along and so I would have been at the effect of mm. that one of the things that Dr. Dan Siegel says is the environment forms the mind mm -hmm. and then especially the first formative right is it the zero to six, six years I hear different yeah. like six seven eight yeah that depends a little bit on the on the uh, rapidity of growth and development mm. within the child so we usually sort of ballpark it for mm -hmm. six years but right. for six to eight years right. are the most formative right. um, and the environment does form the mind mm -hmm. and so the mind formed by me from my environment as a child is with me even now right. as I'm an adult right. and that mind in turn 
formed the world around me. Right, creates your reality. That's right. right. And so eventually um, I, uh, I grew up and swore that I wasn't going to get divorced and I wasn't going to do any of those things. Um, my dad was the loveliest, squishiest man, Aww. but he had a, a propensity to yelling and, mm. and having his own tantrums at times. And so I said, I'm not going to marry anybody like that. I'm going to do it different. I married my dad, oh my goodness. Uh, as we often do, uh, and so had some more invitations to growth mm. and those experiences and became a mother. And one of the things that I discovered is that I had this really uncanny fear from very early on in my first son's um, arrival into the world. First of all, I had a miscarriage scare when he was oh uh, only about eight weeks along. Oh I actually didn't even know I was pregnant oh until about a week before that. <gasps> it was not a planned oh pregnancy. <laughs> um, and then I had a miscarriage scare. I just got oh attached goodness. to him and had this miscarriage scare and thought I was going to lose him, oh which gosh. becomes a key theme. Mm. Then he's born and he doesn't breathe right away. And oh again, I think, oh, we're going to lose him. And then I have this these recurring are worry. Like, these mm. are big traumas, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, and there's been, you know, so many other examples of that over the years where I could uh, tell you about the story, I will lose my children. Mm. And ultimately, I end up uh, getting divorced from their that, right? uh, father. And, uh, and I'm like a pretty, like I'm a spectacular mother. Mm -hmm. I, I, like I'm Dr. Vanessa LaPointe and you got me as a mom, lucky you, right? Right, right. So the idea that I would be concerned that my children will choose their father over me oh. is a really preposterous idea. It cognitively makes zero sense mm -hmm. at all, but it became this like really deep seated fear mm -hmm. of mine. Um, and so I got to get to work on that. And what I discovered in all of that is that I have a great grandmother who uh, is a Native American woman oh. who uh, was sort of conquered by a European settler. Oh my gosh. And so lost her tribe, went off into the wilds of well, Quebec wow. to have uh, seven children with this man, my great grandfather subsequently uh, lost her mind, was institutionalized, oh. and lost all seven of her oh. babies. And so I didn't live through that experience, but that but experience- you're carrying that in your cells. Biologically, it oh. lives in my cells. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And so then you can understand why I have this, you know, uncanny <sighs> fear that I will lose my own baby. But isn't it interesting on this journey, um, releasing mm. and becoming free how our ancestors almost in a way help us because they get to be free through us as That's we do our work is. we're also freeing i believe what i've heard is seven generations back yeah or maybe even more yeah so yeah. it's almost like it's uh, it's so multi-leveled this, yeah. this freedom it's not only for us but it's yeah. for back and also seven generations forward That's right. because we're now truly changing the world because we're releasing it out of, out of our system on mm -hmm. every level every level oh my gosh yeah. that's so beautiful yeah and they're waiting you know that and my great grandmother us, has right? been waiting do you feel for her presence to, all the time they used to come to your dreams or anything to my dream in breath work she comes oh. to me uh so i know that she's there and i know that she has she's been waiting guardian angel. Yeah. so she walks alongside yeah. me that's incredible i yeah. love that so much yeah and so the special. trickle down for my children you know um i'll tell you they so when i ended up separating from their dad it was not a smooth mm. process at it's all never easy uh, there was a giant awakening about to happen. So by necessity, it needed to get very, very messy. Mm. And when we first converged on our sort of um, access schedule, where the kids would spend half their time with their dad and half their time that with me. It must be so difficult. Oh, I can't so challenging. That. And when your fear is you're going to lose your babies, <sighs> even it's though right you can't. Face, right? Absolutely. Like, and oh so my, my kids, the first time they spent five days with their dad, I thought I was going to die. Like I was counting the minutes oh for them to come home. I filled my head full of fanciful um, ideas of how that homecoming was going to be. Mm. And then they, they, the moment arrives, they walk through the, the door. My oldest son, hey mom, like, you know, he's super cool um, and chill about the whole thing. And my youngest son, who I'm, you know, I'm so happy to see them both. And he looks me in the eye and he says to me, you know what, mom? I didn't miss you. <gasps> 
Oh, and then he stab says, in the heart. <laughs> when I leave you, I don't cry. But when I leave dad, I cry. Why do you think he said that? He said that. Remember, none of it's real. Right. He said it because he was awakening a program within me that mm. really needed to be brought to the surface. He was my ready to friendly soul. Right. And so uh, I, um, I will just tell you right now, I did not handle that well. <sighs> I lost my ever loving mind oh all gosh. over him and said horrible, terrible things. Um, you know, the sentiment behind it was I gave you life and this is what you're giving me. <laughs> like, do you know all of the things I've done right. for you? All um, the sleepless nights, my body, is right, everything. Right. And so I stormed off oh. into my room. How old was he? Uh, he would have been nine going on 10, 10. Mm. Um, and of course realized very quickly I mean that the was trigger, not what yeah, needed to happen and that and I I was already deep into my own work and so I knew that it was on me to mm -hmm, figure out mm -hmm. what was going on right because it's not him right I he could He's have bringing said, something up. he really right. is yeah and so I began to work statements um, things like you know he shouldn't say those things to me mm. is it true mm -hmm. and how can i know a hundred percent for sure that he's not supposed to say those things to me mm -hmm. i can't know that right and when he does say those things to me it gives me the gift of pointing me to my wounds absolutely and i really like without any exaggeration i would work 50 statements in a day just really rewiring my brain mm -hmm. and really reprogramming my mind yep. to think of it in a different light. And Wednesdays became known as transition day in my house and I dreaded it. Like I knew he was gonna come through the door saying oh. these horrible things every Wednesday. And I used to sort of set myself up so early on I thought, oh, I know what I'll do. Really what this is is that he needs more attachment and connection so he goes to school an hour away from our home. So I'm gonna go and pick him up from school and that way we'll be in the car together and he'll have this whole hour of focused mummy time mm. before we get home it was a horrible idea because now I'm stuck in a car on the highway mm. in traffic for an hour with this kid who's just like exhausted already, saying all right? of these horrible oh things the entire gosh. time. So anyways, Wednesdays became this very challenging wow. day and I worked it and I worked it and I did breath work and I went to my psyche um, healer and I went to circle and I did private sessions with my um, counselor and I, and I worked, I worked really, really, really hard mm -hmm. until one day he came through the door with his brother and I, the shift had happened, mm. but I didn't know. It's not like you can see it in right, the mirror, right? right? And he said the same horrible things. And I, I could hear him, like I heard what he was saying, but I, I didn't get stuck at that. I could see through what he was saying. I could see through the facade of that into the truth of him. Mm. And my eyes landed on him as he was saying all of those things. And he would have felt the energy behind my gaze and so he said all the terrible things that he would say and I looked at him and I said how are you Aww. and he knew energetically that I had seen him yeah. for the very first time it wasn't about you that it wasn't, it wasn't about, about me it wasn't now. about my wound my mm. hurt my program my right. need that I could see him right. and he looked back at me and his eyes immediately filled with tears and he was uh, so overcome that I knew he wasn't actually even going to be able to stand and he oh. wouldn't want to cry and in front him of his being brother sensitive, right he feels everything too. so I put my arm around him and he collapsed into the side of my body oh. and I just like maneuvered him up the stairs into my bedroom so that he could cry freely without any oh. eyes watching and he sobbed for an hour and a half he oh. told me all of the things on his heart that he has cried every single time oh. he's left my house that he misses me deeply. it was how he was coping it, well and it was a it was to like bring it up in me and right. for him yeah. it's just his little defense system sure. coming to his rescue right. and I heard him I was entirely entirely present and neutral and just feeling for him just creating the space for him to the whole yeah, time wow. and he never again came through the door on a Wednesday saying those things because oh, he didn't need to now right. I had healed right. within myself so he didn't healed. need to bring it up anymore he Isn't didn't need beautiful? to serve the purpose but ask me how many Wednesdays it took I was gonna ask that how long it took 54 
54 Wednesdays. Took a whole over a year. Wow. That, my friends, that's is what it is to do your personal work. Right, exactly. That's what the work is. That's it's the trenches, not for the faint right? of heart. <laughs> that's exactly what I say, yeah. But yeah. isn't the reward so worth it? Just knowing right. what's on the other side. Right? And the relationship that he and I have now, it was very challenging mm. uh, following separation. Was there uh, the any separation. like blame from them in terms of from like him, navigating absolutely. the whole separation? That's, right? yeah. yeah, and so he was full of that, which again, he needed to be right. so that I could right. heal that within right. myself. Right. Um, and, and it's not been a straight line. There's been ups of and course. downs and bumps along the way. Uh, but now three ish years in uh to that whole journey it's um it's sweet mm. i was tucking him into bed Aww. uh just last week and he said to me very very softly he he had come to me he had um he'd had a couple of kind of challenging things at school with some friends uh in the previous couple of weeks where he'd gotten in trouble from mm. a teacher and had been so horrified Aww. that he'd been in trouble um and he'd had some he'd some other things had happened, which in the name of his privacy, I won't <laughs> disclose, but uh, he had had to come to me sort mm -hmm. of with this open heart to say what was going on because he was really worried about um, a bunch of it. And so we'd had some, you know, I had said to him that I really honored him for, for trusting the relationship that we have, that That's he beautiful. would come to me with those things. Um, and, you know, we have difficult conversations. Sometimes uh, things get really challenging between he and his dad. Uh, and I feel like it's my job to honor him in that mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And also to really help him see the truth of who his father is. Right. And we're all souls. Of course. We're all doing souls. Our best. Just we're doing, doing our, best. our best. Everybody yeah. everywhere yes. doing their best yeah. all the With time. With the level of awareness that That's we right. have. That's right. Um, anyway, so fast forward a few days ago and uh, I was tucking him into bed and he, he pulled me in cl close which he always does when he has something important to share Aww. and he says to me mama I'm really glad that I can talk with you oh, so everything. the relationship now is you know I'm sure like you know next week there'll be something but, but that's the foundation sweet. that's right? what it is yeah, yeah just knowing that he has that sacred safe container in which you can see him for exactly who he is and accept him and practice that unconditional love, like truly, right? Yeah, his truth. Yeah, yeah. That is so beautiful. Yeah, that's wonderful. Kudos to you. It's, it's. I can't imagine navigating mm -hmm. through that, and the level of commitment and vulnerability and courage and all the whole thing that it takes. I really want to ask you about once, because those moments happen. Um, we're humans and we're navigating through this. When the connection's broken, how mm. do you? Uh, That's a great question. S come back. How do yeah. you, what's the word I'm looking for? I can't, it's not coming to me, but you know what I mean? How do you repair that? Repair, th yeah. reconnect. Yeah. yeah. And so the idea when you're the grown up in all of this is to recognize that it's on you yes. to right. do that. You're the guide, you're the leader, you're the one that's meant to caretake of the relationship that you have with your child. Right. So you step in. One of the things that um, David and I talk about frequently is uh, the idea, though, that it's not necessarily in your or your child's best interest to go to them with an apology. Because when we communicate to our children that we're seeking their forgiveness, mm. we place a need of ours on their shoulders. We're asking for Giving them. Giving them responsi extra responsibility. That makes sense. We're yeah. asking for them to release us from our guilt mm -hmm. which I've is, done that before yeah so that's why this too. is so important it's yeah. like I don't know like I know I've messed up but how do you repair that connection right. and so the idea is and to take responsibility to for own your, it right so that's they the see key. that because you're modeling you want to model that right so be accountable okay and head over to your child and say I had some yells and shouts in me mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't love that I want you to know that those are done mm -hmm. and that that's not the way that I want to be your mom. That's right. not the way that I want to be your right. dad. And so that's on my mind. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about that. Mm -hmm. And you and I are good. Okay. Everything between us is good. Mm -hmm. You are my most perfect little boy, right. little girl. So you're reinforcing that there's, it's not about them. They didn't do anything that's wrong. Right. It's, it's and all it's on your you. stuff. Right. And you're holding it. Right. And you don't need anything from them. Right. They could then say to you, you're terrible. You always yell at me. You're the worst mom. Mm. And then you just hear them. 
I could re I really get how you could feel that way. Right. It must seem that there's been a lot of yells and shouts right. lately. I understand that. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Thank you. That's mm. so simple, right? Yeah. It's again, it's just that's why I think these types of books and the work that you're sharing is so important because mm. it's giving you these it's again, right? Like you're changing your brain because we don't have like I don't have this language in yeah. my upbringing. So I have to literally like Right. download it into my brain yeah. so when the you know the situation arises I know what to reach for right. and what to say yeah so thank you so much Beautiful. this is gonna help me and I know it'll help others as well um, yeah this is incredible I'm so thank you for being so vulnerable and sharing mm. um, your heart because it's not easy to own up to you know mm. the mess ups that we do yeah um, yeah so what is uh, what is your vision for the work that you're doing what is like the highest vision mm. My thought has always been that when we can change the conversation that we're having on a societal level mm -hmm. about who children are, mm -hmm. that's when we'll change the world. And so imagine, you know, a two, three, four year old having a tantrum in a grocery store lineup mm -hmm. and every other adult in that lineup, rather than looking upon that and child judgment. and that parent with judgment mm. and scorn, a little parenting would help. Right. Have you tried disciplining that little brat? <laughs> you know, right. rather, and whether they say those things out loud or not, many you know of them will think it. those right. things, right? <laughs> but what if, what if every single adult in that lineup, what if we changed the narrative around it, changed the conversation, and every single adult, whether they said it out loud or not, was just full of compassion. Oh, sweet muffin. Right. <laughs> Your prefrontal cortex is not yet <laughs> developed. Look at you being so perfectly three. Right. Isn't it magical that you're right. growing and learning every day? Right. And that the parent wouldn't sit in their own program of shame, shame and guilt yeah. about that, right. right? How many times have I done, stop it, you're embarrassing me. Right, because we think they're they represent how well or not well behaved they are represents yeah. how well we're doing as a parent right. right and we often come through our own childhood with mm -hmm. the programming Absolutely. I must perform in order to be loved of course right? we're not enough as we are right? that's what it is right. and so here we are all of it comes racing to the surface in the grocery store lineup and then we barf that onto our children because we don't know how to contain ourselves exactly. stop it I told you right. you're not now we're not going to the park right, right? and right. we get um, all yelly shouty and, and full of yeah. punishment for them yeah. but what if what if the parent didn't have any of that show going on mm -hmm. they could really just see their child mm -hmm. and they were buoyed up supported by had the feeling of a whole society behind them at their back championing oh, them that's in so that. beautiful I got chills that's the vision I love that I love that. And how do you think you can accomplish that? Like, what is the trajectory to getting there? What do mm -hmm. we have to do as humanity? Yeah. Show up in the truest form of who you are. Mm -hmm. Be your authentic, vulnerable, resonant self and watch what happens. Mm. And do the work. Do the work. We've got to do the work. Yeah. There's no way around it, right? Only every day for the rest of your life. Yeah. It's only through. <laughs> That's right. That's beautiful. I just really want to take a moment to acknowledge you just for who you are. Like you really embody mm -hmm. what you teach, what you preach. And that's what it's all about. Like, you know, anybody can say and write whatever, but it's really just mm -hmm. being everything being. that you are, yeah. you know, meaning to share. So thank you for the work you're doing. It is changing the world. I truly know that with all my heart. And I really acknowledge you for that because it is, again, I totally, we're on the same wavelength, agree that that is the way the world will change in the shortest and most sustainable uh, way by not damaging these beautiful souls that mm. come perfect as they are in their That's essence. Right. And they just need us to just be a guide and just to you know yeah. show the way. Um, so thank you, really, thank from the you. bottom of my heart. So for anyone that wants to learn more about you and the work you're doing and, you know, get the books, where can they find more information about you? Yeah, so my website is Dr. Vanessa Lapointe, Dr. Vanessa Lapointe with an E on the end, dot com. And the books are available uh, pretty much anywhere that books are sold. Um, online is probably Wonderful. the easiest, yeah. best bet. And I love your Instagram as well. Oh. So if you guys are on Instagram, check out. And I believe you're also doing some YouTube as well now. Yes, right? so yeah. So YouTube and Instagram under the same name Dr. Right. Vanessa Lapointe so That's thank right. you so much thank I you. really um, uh, cherish our time together and really appreciate everything you've shared thank you so much I'll share it right back thank, thank you. you 
Thank you, everyone. If you are still here, you've listened all the way to the end of the episode, and I couldn't be more grateful to have you here and to for you to listen and absorb the information and uh, hopefully gain something valuable from this episode. So I would absolutely love, love, love nothing more than to connect with you on Instagram. So if you did listen to this episode, I would love it if you took a screenshot and shared with me over on Instagram that you're listening to the episode. And most importantly, you know, that is really, truly the intention is for you to gain something uh, positive and valuable from the information that you hear here is, um, share with me your biggest takeaways. What did you, uh, what stood out to you? What resonated? Uh, you know, what touched your heart? I would love to hear that. And it will also help me to uh, curate certain guests and uh, see what kind of information resonates with you. So also, if this pod, if this episode, um, you know, touched your heart in any way, I would love it if you would share it as well with at least two to three people that you love that are close to you, that are parents or are thinking of becoming parents. Because like I shared in the beginning of the episode, I really truly believe that is the only sustainable way that it will change the world is if we grow ourselves up, like Dr. Vanessa LaPointe likes to say, and, you know, heal ourselves and in the process raise uh, beings that are uh, free from having to carry you know the weight of our trauma and also most importantly because we're new I would be so so grateful if you would take a second to subscribe to the podcast because there is plenty more uh, wonderful episodes coming your way and um leave a review because reviews are really, really helpful and they help the podcast to become discoverable on iTunes or wherever you're listening to the podcast um, and just help others to find um, find the podcast and find this information. So thank you again so, so much for being here, for listening, for you know being in my life, even if it's virtual. I truly love, appreciate and feel your presence um, in my life. And um, I'm really, really grateful. So thank you again. And until next time, stay conscious. <laughs>